stop. Wait. This is only an intro. Give me 60 seconds to set the video up and then you're going to watch a clip. Do not move. The clip is pretty lengthy, but you need to watch this clip. I'm only using this video to show people the kind of mind frame that is out there that is destructive to our people as a people. This sister is about to speak her mind and she is entitled to her opinion. And I do not want to use this video to disrespect the sister, but I do want to use this video to teach others to be aware that there are others that look like you, but hold a completely different view. Here we go. Hello, family. Um, I have decided to do this video. It has been weighing very heavily on my heart um, and on my mind as well. And it was something that I wanted to say early on, but there were so many emotions and so much pressure. Um, for me to go with the popular opinion about who George Floyd was um, And sometimes it can be difficult when there are just so many external pressures to say what you believe And this was an instance where I felt like my silence would have been better in the beginning But the more that I think about it, I realize that we are being sold a lot of lies and at the detriment to the black community, at the detriment to the white community, and at the detriment to America as a whole. So I um, want to come out and say uh, that I do not support George Floyd and the media depiction of him as a martyr for black America. I'm going to explain why and I hope that some of you guys will understand where I'm coming from. Um, I have spent a considerable amount of time reading a lot um, of black authors that I think are some of the most brilliant black Americans breathing. Um, Walter Williams, Shelby Steele, Thomas Sowell, and I recently came across something that was an idea that was planted into my head by Shelby Steele, and it has been something that I cannot um, forget. It is something that will stick with me for the rest of my life, and it is something that I hope for the black Americans that are watching will stick with you for the rest of your life. Shelby Steele said that the black community is unique from other communities. Um, our, our culture is unique from other communities um, because we are the only community that caters to the bottom denominator of our society. Now, let me explain what that means. Um, it means to say that not every black American is a criminal, not every black American is committing crimes, but we are unique in that we are the only people that fight and scream and demand support and justice for the people in our community that are up to no good. You would be hard pressed to find um, you know, a Jewish person who has spent five stints in prison, uh, who commits a crime and dies while committing a crime, and that the Jewish people champion and demand justice for. You will be hard pressed to find this in white America. You'll be hard pressed to find this even in Latino America. Uh, if there is a person that is spent multiple times in prison, you are not going to see a bunch of Latinos coming out um, demanding justice for this person, even if, and I want to be very clear, what I'm saying is not any defense for Derek Chauvin. I hope Derek Chauvin gets the justice that, um, that he deserves to be um, you know, implemented upon him and that the family um, of George Floyd deserves justice for the way that he, that he died. Um, but I also am not going to accept the narrative that this is the best the black community has to offer. For whatever reason, it has become fast fashionable over the last uh, five or six years for us to turn criminals into heroes overnight. Um, and it is something that I find to be despicable and it's something that I refuse to stand by any longer and I am not going to play a part in it no matter how much pressure comes from black liberals and black conservatives as, as some token of people wanting you to believe that this is the only way you can be black is you have to say this was wrong and that this, you know, this person was amazing. I won't do that. Uh, George Floyd was not an amazing person. Um, and as soon as this video hit the internet, I did just basic searches. Uh, everyone jumped on it and call and, and was looking at the police officer and everyone agrees that the police officer was wrong and the police officer has been arrested. Um, so that is not the reason I'm not discussing that is because that is not something that has been misconstrued in the media. Uh, he has been turned into the devil that he is. And there is no reason for us to harp on that any longer because white Americans are not uplifting Derek Chauvin as a victim or pretending that he's an amazing human being. But George Floyd is being uplifted 
gifted as an amazing human being. Um, and uh, for those of you who have not yet seen the clips and did not pursue or wait for more clips to come out, uh, first and foremost, George Floyd at the time of his arrest was high on fentanyl and he was high on methamphetamine. Uh, this came back in both of his autopsy reports. Uh, if you pursue the 911 transcript, you can see the person describing somebody who is out of their mind high, um, and which is what made the person fearful because he tried to, you know, to uh, use a, a, a bill that I guess was a fake bill to purchase something, and then he was outside acting weird, and they, in their police call, said that this person was obviously distorted and on drugs. Uh, when he is put into handcuffs and is put against the wall, a baggie of what looks to be like uh, cocaine or uh, some, it's, it's white, it's a white baggie that he drops onto the floor that you can see in an image. If you look up the clip, the media is refusing to circulate it. You can find no, it on Twitter. If you if you use DuckDuckGo and look up um, George Floyd baggy, uh, you can watch the clip yourself with your own eyes. Uh, he had drugs on him at the time of his arrest. Um, now, barring all of that, nobody thinks that he should have died during this arrest, but what I find despicable to be is that everyone is pretending that this man lived a heroic lifestyle when he didn't, and I want to talk about what his lifestyle was um, leading up to this moment and why I refuse to accept the narrative that this person is is a martyr or, or should be lifted up in the black community and that we should be buying t-shirts uh, with his name on it, okay? So, here we have, first and foremost, let's start from the bottom of his record. And by the way, I am not saying that if you have a record, you don't deserve a second chance. I think people get arrested um, and some people can serve time in prison and I believe in second chances but I do draw the line when it comes to uh, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth, ch and ninth chances. 1998 he spent uh, 10 months in prison for theft with a firearm. Uh, that was the first prison stint that I could find on him. In 2002, he spent eight months in prison for a cocaine offense. In 2004, just two years later, he spent another 10 months in prison for a cocaine offense. In 2005, he spent another 10 months in prison for having um, less than one gram of cocaine on him again. Um, in 2007, and this was the biggest instant um, uh, that I had that made me realize this was a horrible human being that I would, I, I am not going to pretend was a good person. In 2005, a woman who was pregnant uh, received a knock at the door um, and she went to the door and the person pretended to be someone that worked um, for the water department. So she opened her door and quickly realized that the person at her door did not work for the water department and attempted to slam it. Um, and at the moment that she was attempting to slam it, a Ford pulled up and another five men jumped out of the car, and one of which was George Floyd, came up to the door and they forced their way inside to her home, uh, inside of her home. Um, mind you, this woman is pregnant. At that point, uh, George Floyd took out a gun and pressed it to her stomach. Um, and she was screaming, begging for her life, and, uh, and he put her inside of her living room and instructed one of his criminal friends that was with him uh, to watch her and to make sure she didn't leave the living room. So he was playing guard while they ransacked her home looking for drugs and money. They did not find um, drugs. They ended up taking, I believe, her wallet and her cell phone. Fortunately for her, her neighbor um, observed what was going on and caught the license plate of the people as they pulled off and called 911. And when 911 was able to, um, they were able to track down the car uh, of which uh, George Floyd was the driver, um, and they arrested him. And two years later, he was sentenced to five years in prison um, for that instance. Um, now, you can say uh, the media is portraying it like he was just getting his life together after you know being released in 2014 following that incident. Uh, he was just getting his life together and, and moved and was going to start afresh. I'd like to believe all of those things, and there's a gap, and he never got in trouble for five years until this incident when the police were called on him again. Um, uh, but you are defying common sense to believe that this person suddenly became an exemplary character but happened to be high on fentanyl and methamphetamine um, and, and trying to use a bill, um, uh, a fake bill, to purchase something. And so, in my opinion, uh, George Floyd was a criminal. <laughs> he was a criminal. And just because he was a criminal doesn't mean he deserved to die at the knee of a police officer. But it does mean that I am not going to play a part of the broken black culture that always wants to martyr criminals, who wants to pretend they were these upstanding human beings that just wanted to help society, uh, that just wanted to reach out um, and, and uplift society. And we're, he has a rap sheet that is long, that is dangerous. He was an example of a violent criminal his entire life. 
okay? Up until the very last moment. Now, again, I want to be clear, this is not a defense for Derek Chauvin. No one in, that I have spoken to, no one in the news is defending Derek Chauvin. He is getting what he has coming to him. Okay, great. But why are we pretending that this criminal should be upheld as a citizen, uh, 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 of a, as a martyr in black America? A martyr for a fake narrative, by the way. Police brutality, racially motivated police brutality is a myth, okay? So let's get into that. Not only are we using this death, right, and allowing it to cause these riots and protests, pretending this was some upstanding citizen in the black community who was tackled down um, and, and killed for no reason, right? Not only are we allowing it to inspire riots, riots in which black people are dying, in which actual upstanding black citizens are dying. Case in point, I'm sure you guys have all now seen uh, David, uh, the, the sheriff that just was shot and killed uh, because he was trying to protect uh, a a pawn shop. Please look him up if you haven't seen it. I'm blanking on his last name. His first name is David, um, who was shot and killed for trying to protect a pawn shop from looters. An upstanding citizen, an actual head of a police. He was the head of a police his entire life, 77 years old, did everything right, right? So we now have to kill upstanding black citizens because a non-upstanding black citizen, a career black criminal died. Now, did he deserve to die in that manner? No. I can't say it enough. No, he didn't deserve to die in that manner. But I will be damned if the rest of us upstanding black citizens have to suffer because of this incident that rarely ever happens in America. So here are some numbers for you people that are still believing that police brutality is a real, racially motivated police brutality is a real thing. First and foremost, okay, you have a 25% higher chance as a violent white criminal of dying at the hands of a police officer than you do as a black criminal. Last year, a total of nine unarmed black, black men were killed by police officers and 19 white men were killed by police officers. For those of you that aren't good at mathematics, Right? You might be thinking, oh, but Candace, white people represent 60% of the population and black people represent just 13% of the population. It doesn't matter what percentage of the population you represent, it matters what percentage of the violent criminal community you represent. And unfortunately, black community create uh, um, commits a disproportionate amount of crimes compared to the white community. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, 6% of the population, right, black men, 6% of the population account for 44% of all murders in this country, according to 2018 statistics. That is what you call a gap. And yet white people, white people who represent 60% of the population, we represent 13, uh, black men are 6%, uh, only, uh, represent 50% of all the murders, right? That makes no sense. That, that makes no sense. A six point variation in a community where we are, we are extreme minorities. We commit 50% of all violent offenses, evenly split, and we're only 13% of the population, okay? So we have a lot more encounters with police officers. And don't say the police officers are coming around because we're black. I'm talking about violent criminals. I'm talking about murder, 44% of murders, okay? You want to talk about real statistics? The, the, the police officers have way more to be fearful of in the black community than the other way around, okay? We commit, on average, a, a police officer is 18 and a half times more likely to be killed by a black person than the other way around, okay? So this entire narrative is complete smoke and mirrors. It's all made up. It's just election fodder. It's white versus black because it's an election year, not because black Americans are suffering at the hands of police officers more than white Americans. Do some police officers do the wrong thing? Yes. I don't think there's anybody in the world who has not encountered a police officer and thought this person is an absolute jerk who is power tripping, whether you are black or white. We know they exist. And we know they're always going to exist, by the way, because they're human beings. And sometimes human beings suck. In fact, if you want to attack a community for, for you know, accidental slayings or brutality, did you know that doctors accidentally kill a quarter of a million people every year because of mistakes. Do you know that there's, there's been doctors that have been arrested for being serial killers, that just were killing people because they wanted to? Do we protest and boycott doctors? Do we assume all doctors are horrible human beings because some doctors are? Or do we realize that society is not perfectible? People suck in every profession. It is no excuse to paint society with a broad brush. It is certainly no excuse to accept a Democrat narrative, okay, that black Democrat. people are being disproportionately hunted down by police officers because of the color of their skin. 
You want to know the best way to avoid not being not being brutalized by a police officer is to not is to is to lo limit the amount of encounters you need to have with them, especially when it comes to violent crimes. Okay. I am not going to stand for this continual bottom feeding narrative of us martyring people that have had five, six, seven stints in prison and then pretending they were upstanding heroes to our community. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. Excuse my language. It's absolute bullshit. And I'm tired of it. I'm tired of having to play pretend. I'm tired of sitting here and being called a coon or an Uncle Tom because I won't play this bottom feeding game with you. If you want to hang up posters of criminals on your wall and talk about them as your martyrs, do it. Do it. You can do it. Kobe Bryant was my idol. Okay, I'll keep a photo. I'll keep a photo of Kobe Bryant. You can keep one of George Floyd and pretend he was an upstanding human being that just once or twice put a gun across a pregnant woman's belly. Could you imagine that woman right now? That black woman, by the way, right? Watching everybody pretend this person was an upstanding human being who just at the age of 42 and five prison stints was going to get his life together. I mean, it's embarrassing. We are embarrassing in that regard, right? We, this is why we have a cycle and a toxic culture, because nobody wants to tell the truth in black America. It's so easy to be a victim. It's so easy to ask black, white people to bow down and apologize and do all these things for us. It's crap. It's crap. It's a lie. It's a farce. Our biggest problem is us, okay? It's why we don't talk about it when black on black crime happens. It's why we don't talk about it when 40, 40 black people are killed in one weekend during Memorial Weekend um, in Chicago. We don't want to talk about any of that stuff. We don't want to talk about Baltimore. We don't want to talk about New Jersey. We don't want to talk about any of these places where black people are being slaughtered by other blacks because that would, that would mean that we had to be personally accountable, right? That would mean personal responsibility. We don't do personal responsibility in our community. We don't do it. We blame white people. Right. We only point a camera to white people when they do something, even though we do it at a way higher rate to ourselves. Right. We celebrate our drug dealers. We're the only community. Right. That would ever create hashtags to free people from prison because they committed crimes like free Meek Mill, free this rapper, free this rapper. How hard is it to not spend multiple times in prison? How difficult is that? Is that too hard for us? I mean, is that way too high of a mountain for us to scale to do the right thing to be upstanding citizens? That is the call to action that I have for Black America with Blexit. Like, why do we keep fulfilling this narrative? What do you think the perception of us, by the way, is on the outside? You ever look at the comments? You ever go into, like, an anonymous blog and see what people say? Oh, just black people being black people. I see those racist comments. Oh, just black people got to riot. Black people got to be black people. You know how they are. Oh, just black people being ignorant. That, that is the perception. When people get to be anonymous and talk about us, that's what they think about us, right? They think that... We are the kind of people that will forever uphold criminals as the martyrs of our society, that we will never take account for the things that we do wrong, right? That we don't have it within us to educate ourselves to get ahead. And that for those of us that actually do it, well, we get called coons, right? You got Condoleezza Rice, she's a coon. Larry Elder, he's a coon. Dr. Ben Carson, brain surgeon, first ever to perform uh, the surgery of splitting uh, twins that are connected by the head. He's a coon, right? What a loser he is. What a stupid guy he is. Kanye West says he, he's not going to be told to do it because of the color of his skin. He's a coon. He's lost. He's in the sunken place. The sunken place. That's where we all are, right? Because we demand more and we will get more out of this society because we will be, we we're going to get ahead, right? That's what's going to happen. We're going to get ahead. Black conservatives get ahead because we don't subscribe to this narrative. Because you're not going to catch me outside trying to grab a TV pretending that it's because a martyr named George Floyd got killed. Okay? I'm a big believer that no matter what color you are, you do stupid things, you win stupid prizes. Okay? We have to do better. We have to teach our kids better. Or we're not going to get ahead. Right? Anyways, this is just a rant because I have been feeling super, super, super annoyed at these depictions in society. I, I have, you know, I have no apologies here to make. Uh, George, George Floyd is not my martyr. He can be yours. That's, and that's all I have to say to black America. It's funny how this type of a black woman, she never comes to the aid of other black women like Breonna Taylor, like Sandra Bland, like all the others. There was no part in her long speech just now where she actually said, listen, I'm a black woman as well, and for those of you who um, might be thinking that I'm on the other side of whatever, you know how you think. For I do think that people like Sandra Bland, people like Breonna Taylor, people like... The, there was no room in her speech for the support of other 
black women even. And the reason why is because for her to do that would be for her to have to admit that racially motivated police brutality is not a myth. But she already said it clearly in her speech. She said word for word, racially motivated police brutality is a myth. <laughs> It's easy for me to disrespect this person, call her all kinds of names, but it is not going to solve anything. I'm not gonna bash her with profanity and silly names. I am going to talk about the things that this sister missed. I've said before that if you are a black man and you run into a sister that's like her you're better off with a Caucasian woman and I'm talking about for uh, relationship sake I'm talking about for building a family with sake I'm talking about for having her as the love of your life sake let me turn that light off behind me it's a bit bright okay if you are a black man and this is your choice to stay in your race as a woman, you better find you a Becky quickly. A lot of things she said, I had to make pointers. And I'm going to walk you through some of these pointers. First of all, I was bothered by the number of white men. Now somebody said, so Flo, she's married to a white man. Okay, so she's probably just trying to be on his good side because these are the views that he holds. So she has been indoctrinated. And in order for her to be in his good graces, she better not. She better not ever get up in his house or anywhere that he can see or hear and say, I support George Floyd. I support the movement behind George Floyd or the passing of George Floyd so she better act like it's all about something else that whole they are criminals that whole they lazy they don't work they're uneducated um, all kinds of stuff like that she better still hold on to that narrative and she better trumpet that narrative loud enough for the world to hear I was disturbed when I saw the amount of white men that were on her timeline as she did this live. All these white men were on the timeline on the video saying stuff like, now this is an intelligent black woman. Now this is a beautiful intelligent black woman. Here's a highly educated intelligent black woman. Oh, I like her. I would like to meet her. That like tons of comments and every one of them, if you look in the icon, was a white guy. A white man she was pleasing the racist biased white men that's all she was doing with this video now racially motivated police brutality is a myth for for <laughs> for for a black woman to say that racially motivated Police brutality is a myth. I was glad when she said that because I wanted to show other people. Because I've said this before on my channel over and over again. But people skip over it because I don't have an example to show them. Even though I come in contact with these types. Okay? But now I have a video I can show you. Racially motivated police brutality is a myth is what this sister said. I guess lynching is a myth. I guess the transatlantic slave trade is a myth. I guess all the things we went through, Jim Crow, all that stuff was a myth. Martin Luther King came and he marched through the streets and he did his peaceful protest is a myth. Our people got targeted. Uh, Black Wall Street getting bombed out is a myth. Okay. There's a black woman that was shot in her house through the window. There's a woman who was shot in her bed, Breonna Taylor. There's a 
woman, Sandra Bland, who a simple traffic stop turned into her dying. And you know what came out of that? Uh, she had underlying health issues and she panicked when the cop pulled her over and took her into custody and uh, she died from her own issues. This is a woman that was fine, okay, until she encountered the police officer. By the way, I'm of the firm belief that if someone is, a, someone is okay until they come in contact with the police officer and as a result of coming in contact, they die then that police officer must be held accountable at some degree, some level. She came up with numbers. She said last year, nine black people, that's 2019, nine black people were killed at the hands of police officers, nine black people that were unarmed, non-combative. Some of them were running away and were shot in the back multiple times. And they were not suspected of a violent crime. So she compared the number 9 to the number 19 for white people. Then she went on to say that blacks commit 50% of the violent crimes in the United States of America even though we only make up 13% of the entire population that is black man, woman and child. And if you scale it back to black men only, we are only 6% of the United States population, yet we make up majority of those of who are in prison and of those who are... I mean, this sister went out of her way to prove to you, basically, that he deserved this. She is obviously also a Republican. Now, I don't know about the Democrat versus Republican stuff. What I do know is I don't give two about any of them. And the reason why I don't is because it's politics. And in politics, I know that both parties play for the same puppet master. It's the puppet master who decides when to put which one in and who to put as the head of each one, who is willing enough to spin their narrative. And that's it. So I'm not caught up in the Democrat versus Republican stuff, but I do notice that a lot of Republicans, including the ones that are black that are Republicans, they tend to go hardline on issues that have anything to do with black people. Whereas Democrats seem as they're not so hard-lined. Or maybe they're just more sneaky about it. Anyways, this is not a Democrat versus Republican thing. This is about that sister and what she just said. Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, these types of people could never be her hero. Because the way she described this brother, George Floyd, all the things that he did. The times he spent in prison. She didn't say we're a unique set of people because we are creative. She didn't say we're a unique set of people because given the circumstances of how a lot of us came to the United States of America's shores, that we have overcome these circumstances, all these struggles, and we still have thousands of our children that graduate high school even under a suppressive, oppressive system, because you know, in certain neighborhoods, the schools are less funded and they have the least of everything. That is like giving a child barely what it needs to start off in life and then giving another child that's standing right next to that same child everything it needs to start off in life. And then expecting the child that has barely anything to compete throughout life with the one that is given every tool it needs to succeed and move farther ahead. And she could have pointed to all these things that we continue to overcome. Thousands of black men, 
young black men graduate college every single year and go on to get their associate degrees, their masters, their bachelors, their doctorate, PhD. Thousands and thousands of them. This is not a myth, this is a fact. But she says we are unique. She could have said we, are, we were unique because of our athletic abilities. Because it seems like we have a gene that allows us to dominate in athletics. Some of the brightest minds in academics are black. No, she said we are unique according to some Arthur that she we are unique because we are the only set of people that martyr and support the bottom half. And then she went on to say you won't see a Jewish person doing it. You will um go into march in the streets for a Jewish person that had been to prison multiple times and had died no you won't see it you won't see it and here's my here's my thing to her you won't see that because they help themselves from inside the system <laughs> so the judge is probably Jewish the high-powered lawyers used to defend the case are probably Jewish and given that they know each other and they secure safety for their own, how many Jewish people do you see getting pulled over, tussling with police? How many Jewish people do you see get pulled over and are asked to step out of their vehicle for no reason? And when they ask the police officer, May I ask you why am I being asked to step out of my vehicle? I don't have anything on me. I'm, I wasn't driving crazy. I don't look, I mean, I, do I fit the description of a crime? I just want to hear why I'm getting pulled out of my vehicle. Step out of the vehicle and I'm not going to ask you again. You don't see them getting treated like that. We are the only set of people that cater to our bottom half. She said. So, she, in other words, then, she refuses to be one of those that caters to the poorer class of blacks. Basically, is what she's saying. She has arrived. She is in the top upper echelon. Now, I don't know this sister. I don't know what she does for a living. I don't know who she's married to. I have been told that she's married to a Caucasian man, but I don't know for sure. That information was not verified by me. However, I can tell by her attitude and the words that she has used in this video that she thinks she has arrived. She has decided to separate herself from the lower half of our people. Now, she went on to say that she will not support this movement to, as, to have George Floyd as a martyr for black America because his criminal record and the things he did in the past. She even went as far as to say because he was on drugs and very combative at the time of his arrest and when he was pulled over and he was fighting with the police. That's why they had to pin him down. This sister went on to say that as soon as it, she is completely oblivious. I know a lot of y'all think they're, nah, Soflo's lying. There ain't no black people out there like that. Here's a perfect example of one. She said that our culture is unique because we cater to the bottom half of our culture. She also said that as soon as the news of this man getting that knee on his neck, as soon as that news hit the media, the video that was released that everybody saw where he was crying for his mama, where he couldn't breathe, where he told the man he can't breathe before he ended up dead, and even when he went unconscious, that knee was still pinned to his neck. She said as soon as that hit the media, Everyone agreed that it was wrong and the cop who had his knee on his neck was arrested. 
Where has this system been? Or is she giving that much effort to denying what actually took place? She said as soon as it hit the media, as soon as it hit the media, everybody agreed he was wrong and he was arrested. That's a lie. There were four cops that were on this one man. I don't know if she hasn't seen the videos or I don't know if her excuse is, oh, those are doctored up videos. Somebody edited the video and put people in it because there were only two people there. At one point in the video, there were four people, four cops that were on this one man. It took forever for them to even arrest the first one that had his knee on the man's neck. That's what all the marching was about. That's what all the, the, the chaos you've seen was about. That's why people came out in thousands in foreign countries because they're on the outside looking in and they're saying if that happens there, it probably can happen here. So we have to send a message here that we will never be accepting of anything like that. So don't even try it. She's not talking about the videos that were seen where police officers were participating in looting and wrecking people's stores. She forgot all that information, but she will not support George Floyd as a martyr for black America. Well, my sister, let me tell you something. You don't have to support him being a martyr for black America, right? He is more than that. She said the autopsy, his autopsy came back already. And his autopsy says he was high on fentanyl. He was high on meth. And he used a fake bill. And he was outside the store acting weird. Now, I have seen the store owner or the clerk who was working that day, the one who actually called the police and the one who told the other one to call the police have both spoken. And they both said he did not deserve that. They never called. There was nowhere in the police call that said, this guy looks like he's high out of his mind. This guy looks like he's acting crazy. He might be a danger to our store. He might be a danger to all our other customers here. There was nothing in that police call that said that about him from the store owner or the clerk that he dealt with at the store. It was about a $20 bill and the bill they thought was fake. So she went out of her way to talk about how he was high out of his mind. And, he, and, and in one breath, she's saying the police officer who had his knee on his neck, he's been arrested. And okay, he, he's, he's got what's coming to him. She's not talking about the others that participated, that sat by and watched as this man begged for his life until he died. This is a black woman that has no love for black men, period. Matter of fact, I can look at her and I can tell that she doesn't date black men. She could be in the presence of the most eloquent the most well-spoken, the most highly educated, the most bourgeois, well-behaved black man, the most accomplished, and she would still see a vagabond. She would still see a ghetto thug. He is that much programmed. She's saying that everybody is pretending that he lived an exemplary life. Who is? No one is pretending he lived an exemplary life. This is not about his lifestyle. This is not about his lifestyle. She says the media, mainstream media, is not telling you about all the times he went to prison in 1999. Then he went in 2002. And then he went in 2005. And he did 10 months each time he went. Then he went back in 2007. You know why mainstream media is not pushing that narrative? You know why mainstream media is not saying 
Look at his criminal record. Look at what he has done wrong in the past. Look at his drug test. Mainstream media is not pushing that narrative, not because they want to see a race war. Mainstream media is not pushing that narrative because they know that this is not about his criminal record. They know that by all accounts, video accounts, accounts by verbal accounts by bystanders, eyewitnesses, that this man did nothing to deserve what he got. They know that the only people that are treated like this in the United States of America are people that resemble this man. They know that racially motivated, racially motivated police brutality is not a myth. They know they would have been glad. Think about it. They would have been glad to put that out in the open if it was factual. He was high on meth. He was high on all the stuff that she said he was high on. And he was belligerent and he was acting crazy and he was fighting the cops and he's a big guy. And they felt, they felt like they had to pin him down because he was trying to pull their weapon, which he might have used on them. And he has a long criminal record. They would have used that joyfully to exonerate those four officers. Let me close this video by saying this. <clears throat> I'm going to say this again. And this is for black women as well as black men. Here's the reason why I have never been the type. Well, I used to be when I was younger and then I went out into the world and I learned different through experience. I stopped being that person a long time ago. Whoever you want to be with, fall in love with, have a family with, get married to, that is your business. And I don't care if they're white, I don't care if they're the same as you are, I don't care if they're biracial, they could be Indian, Chinese, whatever you choose, that's your business. Understand that it's important to judge people based on that individual person and not stereotypically judge someone understand that there are people out there who are your people as you would call them if you're black then there are black people out there who are detrimental to your development as a person detrimental to your people's development as a race so when you run into black people like these, if you're looking for courting, dating, uh, family, then it is better for you to be with someone from another race than to end up with someone like this. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about all the things that she said and how much of what she said do you agree with? Let me say this before I go. Legal does not always mean right. A lot of our great heroes went to prison. If we were to judge them on the fact that they went to prison, would be also for us to ignore all the great things that they did to move us forward as a people, the great sacrifices they made. I'm out. Peace.